So uh, we are Dot and Cover. Um, this came out of one of the uh, ideas yesterday suggested by Robin, where what we've been trying to do is understand how to do automated uh, documentation coverage testing. So you all know about code coverage. Dot and Cover is doing exactly the same thing for automatically scanning your code for documentation. Um, so the way you would use this is simply by downloading um, Dock and Cover and then running it against your Git repository. Um, so what I've been trying to do as other people have been uh, kind of like doing this stuff is downloading the repositories and maybe if we have time we'll run Dock and Cover against them. But um, you'll see there's only three of us here. That has had certain challenges, um, and, but also a whole load of benefits. And I'm going to hand over to Melody to describe some of our working process. Thank you. So um, if you um, go into our repository, we actually have created a um, follow along guide for the judges under dogs. <laughs> so um, basically what we wanted to do is we wanted to be able to put together this program as, as um, simply and straightforwardly as we could, considering all three of us um, had, between the three of us, one person's working knowledge of Python and regex. Um, but it worked really well. So um, we sat down together for a good hour or so before we really began, planned out exactly how the workflow was going to work in the program, what exactly each function was going to do, and what data structures were needed to going into and out of each function. At that point, we could separate and each work on a different part of the full program process. Um, what we did is we tried to use best practice, considering this is part of best practice, what it's actually covering. We um, used the open infrastructure of GitHub. All of our code is open and free, and we all agreed upon a license and how open we were going to begin before we even began doing it. Um, big why was that we wanted to make sure that people had a straightforward way of having good practice, one click, and being able to do this. Um, the way we worked together is we all worked around a table. There's only three of us, so we didn't really need to have scrums. We could just poke each other when we needed to say. Um, but because we all had different experiences and different um, accuracy levels, we were able to write our own code and then correct everyone's code. Everyone contributed to everyone's bit of the puzzle. And I will pass it on. Um, so the way it works is we tried to have it so that it could be modular and you could make extensions to it. So the first thing it does is um, it... it it looks at your directory, it goes through and it identifies certain file extensions and then groups them into their language types. So at the minute it looks for Python files. Uh, that can then be passed on to a parser which will start looking through those files and looking for what it knows to be Python definitions. Uh, we, we started running out of time and didn't get as much as we wanted to. It currently doesn't do Python classes. Uh, it only focuses on the actual Python functions themselves. Uh, it then looks at, uh, in that sense, it's looking at the developer documentation, so it's looking for comments straight after the function to see whether you've described your input parameters, your output from each function, whether you've just described what that function does. The, it then also looks at user-level documentation, the, a separate part that is modular so you can add to it, looks into currently only markdown documents to see whether you've described your functions in there, or to exclude anything where you've just got a list of functions so that you're not trying to cheat it. But the idea is, it, you know, it can be cheated, but it's there to help you as much as it is to put it in something like the software assessment framework so we can assess software. Okay, so let's see if this live demo works. Um, as you can see here, I have, let's see, uh, let's let's look at Axelrod. Does anyone, anyone know what Axelrod is? <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Um, so Axelrod might be uh, a piece of code that is known to one of the judges. Um, I've just downloaded this. So we're going to uh, just check the source code documentation, not the, not the uh, uh, markdown and other files, because they're pretty good, and we, we, we don't want to give them too high a score. So we, all we'll do is we'll kind of run it through. And all that happens is it'll give back a particular, hopefully, um, percentage coverage. So Axelrod <laughs> has 0.07 uh, <laughs> percentage um Coverage. Uh, it's, you know, that's not bad for a, uh, for a project. Um, what other things did I manage to put? Let's see. Let's see. Let there be. Okay. There's not much code in that code base, but 7.5%. Pretty good. Pretty good. But anyway, um, so all we're trying to do is come up with a really quick way of uh, doing scoring in a similar way to code coverage, because actually that's all you want to do. You're just trying to make that hit higher and higher to 100%. Um, and hopefully this is an easy way of being able to do that. Thank you very much. <laughs>